Welcome in everybody to the first ever FIDE and Chess.com Online Nations Cup. We are getting set for the drawing of lots and we have a pretty exciting day ahead to decide who's going to play who. But as always, before I move forward, I have to bring in the one and only Grandmaster Robert Hess, my partner, as, as is most often in, in crime. Although today, today there will be nothing but focus on the best chess players in the world representing some of the top chess countries, Robert, in what is kind of being loosely described as the first ever online chess Olympiad. Your thoughts on what we're about to see here and how excited are you for this event? Oh, I think it's a fascinating event. Thank you, everybody who's tuning in. I really am looking forward to seeing the pairings for the very first round because with six super strong teams from all across the globe, it's really going to be a true battle between nations and in some cases between continents and in another case between just a global team. The global team. Yeah, well, let's let's before we dive in and meet the teams, remind everybody of who is playing. Let's remind everyone of the format of the first ever event here, this FIDEHS.com Online Nations Cup. As we said, it is the first event of its kind. It is a, a invitational event. These, these teams were invited, China, India, Russia, the United States, Europe, which is obviously where you start to break into the rest of the world, Europe representing several countries. And then you have a team comprised of some of the best chess players who maybe don't quite fit into one of those other five country boxes. It's a double round robin event. Uh, so the scoring is similar to other team events. It will be two points for a win, one point for a draw, zero for a loss. But it really gets exciting because after the initial rounds of play, Robert, we move into a super final, a match of the top two teams uh, at, the, at the end of the, of the first, I call it the first section of play, I guess you will. The time control is pretty standard. It's 25 minutes plus 10 second increment. Now, when I say standard, it's maybe not the most standard time control people see in the online chess world, but it is a very well-known time control, uh, currently the preferred time control for the rapid tie breaks of the World Chess Championship. Uh, and as we said, each team is representing one of the top chess countries in the world, but they also consist of four main players and then a reserve, a, a reserve women's player and a team captain. So, Robert, before we even talk about the prizes, just your initial thought here about what this format uh, is going to bring us for this for the rest of this week. I think it would be fascinating to see when teams stagger their lineups and say, hey, this person gets a, a buy because with a double round robin format, it means you play every single team with white and with black. So if you have a bad initial game against a team, you can either get revenge in the later matchup or you can say, well, the captain can say, I didn't really like the way you played in that game. Let's take you out and replace you with a reserve player. So I do think with the double round robin format, it gives everyone a fair shot of both colors, but also will be interesting to see the dynamics of the uh, team lineups. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about the lineups and how and when team captains have the right to sub out in a little bit later on here in today's show. But before we do, we still have a lot of people tuning in and asking, what is this event? Well, you see the format of the first ever FIDEHS.com Online Nations Cup. Let's remind you of what they're playing for. It's $180,000 in total cash. Uh, and what I, what I find it most interesting about this is obviously... First of all, every team is being given something for their time. When the best chess players in the world are, are uh, coming together, that should be expected. But they definitely have incentive to move on, right? I mean, you're talking about the top two teams pretty much doubling their money. And if you are one of the top two teams playing in that super final, you have every incentive to try to win it. So your thoughts on the prize breakdown here. And you and I talk about this so much. We've commentated on all types of events for many years here. We talk about the prizes and how it can motivate uh, fighting chess on the board, right? And, and what do you think about this particular prize breakdown and, and what that might inspire in terms of the team matchups and their willingness to really go for it to win the extra money in the final two, uh, final two matches? What's so exceptional about an event like this, I think there's so much national pride and team pride. And it's funny for an individual game like chess, players really get motivated by having teammates. And so that in and of itself is enough motivation. But with a prize fund like this, having the extra 24 grand for first place and 12 grand for the runner up, you will see teams taking some risk to be like, hey, you know, if we get third place or sixth place, we're getting the same prize fund. I know that we want to score as well as possible, but we have to go for it. And so I do think you will see more risk taking than usual. Yeah, and uh, you know the the extra money you get kind of just for showing up when the best chess players in the world are doing that. Again, that's kind of a 
I, you know, these days there's a lot of a, a lot of cash in in online events. We know that, um, and so that's that's not a ton of money, but I think it is enough to inspire that. Hey, I really like to make it to one of the top two places. A little bit more, a um, little bit more cash for our time here. Uh, and, and let's talk a little bit about the schedule and how it's going to break down. We've got things going here this morning with the opening ceremony. Obviously, the first round kicks off tomorrow morning. Uh, and every day it's it's 6 a.m. Pacific time. If you're here on the West Coast like me, 9 a.m. If you're uh, in New York like my partner, Grandmaster Robert Hess, or wherever else you might be, uh, as you can see, it starts at uh, oh, 1,500 local time. You're talking... Uh, as, as far as CEST, and we build out throughout the whole weekend. Sunday will be our super final. Robert and I will be here pretty much all week, if you're wondering who your commentator team will be. And then uh, we have a lot of special guests lined up to join us. None other than uh, the FIDE president, Arkady Dibarkovich, will be here today, and then many others uh, throughout. We may have some other team captains tuning in, and some of the top chess players and commentators on the planet will be with us throughout. So, Robert, as we... Uh, we come back here. Let's start talking a little bit about the drawing of lots, the uh, the format. Uh, you can you can see the rules in front of you. Just remind everybody, it's an algorithm, right? So the drawing of lots. Sometimes you think of a coin flip. This is about as as coin flippy as we get in the modern day society, right? It's a random algorithm telling us who's going to play who. So uh, we we have the teams. They will be ordered numerically, which basically means the first team drawn is the one seed, and the second team drawn will play that team uh, in round one. The, uh, the order also determines the full slate of pairings. So if we're reading that third bullet point, teams will know who they're playing in what round after today's drawing of lots, after today's kind of preview show. Um, and uh, the teams play two different teams on each day. That was, that was a discussion we had, Robert. I'm curious your thoughts on that. Ultimately, this is the more traditional way to do it in a double round robin, that you don't play the same person and just flip colors. I think it's a better uh, format overall. And your thoughts on how the players will react to getting two different opponents in one day versus playing the same person with, the, with uh, just flipping colors. I think it's a really good thing because psychologically it can be difficult to play the same opponent back to back. For instance, let's say you lose to that opponent. Then you're like, I need to beat this player, but then you're not doing the team any favors because when you get into that subjective mindset of I need to do something and I need to win when you're results oriented like that, that's not chess, chess objective. You have to just look at the board and evaluate. So I do think it's good that you won't have these kind of grudge matches on the same day and it gives players time to relax, breathe. And if they do have a bad result in the first game, they have an entire Entirely new opponents, a fresh start, and they right. can look at it with a new lens. Yeah, I, I agree absolutely. I also think it builds storyline throughout the event too. So you know that later on, round two, you're going to get that same opponent in round nine, right? And you're kind of anticipating based on the earlier result in terms of what happened and, and how that might uh, be motivating the player coming in coming into one of the later rounds. Uh, we, we also, as we said, the players and captains are all with us. Uh, they are actually already waiting during during uh, this particular preview show. They have been involved in a technical meeting. Um, we can see some of Chess.com's uh, directors and, and uh, event managers there. We see the FIDE president, Arkady Dubrakovich, up in the left corner. You might recognize some of the other faces there. Maxime Vache the Grave, uh, Vishwanathan Anand, among two of the best chess players in the world. Uh, early thoughts on who wins best webcam of the day, Robert? <laughs> um, you know, I, it's a hard one there, but I think to be safe, I'm going to go with... Uh, the FIDE president, Arkady Dvorkovic, because, well, you know, looking spiffy, looking sharp, ready to captain the rest of the world team. Um, but what about you, Danny? You, you like to play these games, so pick your favorite. International Master John Donaldson, a captain of the U.S. Olympic team and many team events here in the United States for, for as long as I can remember during my lifetime in chess. I feel like he's been captaining and helping to lead Team USA. Uh, our director of uh, business development right there in the middle. Nick, Nicholas Barton just gave us a wave. And so uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass judgment on who the best webcam is and, uh, and come back to it when we start getting into the interviews and, and seeing the, maybe the, the players and teams' reactions to finding out who they're playing. Uh, let's, let's, speaking, speaking of the players and their reactions, let's just start working through the teams here and remind everybody, all right, we've seen them in live fashion, but let's, uh, let's really get clear on who will be leading these teams over the coming week. For China, I don't think it's a big surprise who we see boards one, two, and three. Uh, Ding Li Ren and Wang Hao both competing in the FIDE Candidates Tournament when that event resumes. Uh, Wei Yi, rising superstar, it's hard to even call him that anymore. He, at some point, was a junior just, just last year. 
Uh, and then you look at those reserves, right? Yu Young Yi, uh, Zhu Wenjun. I don't even know what to say, right? Ho Fan is also right there. Your thoughts on Team China and the juggernaut that always is representing the Far East? Well, Yu Yang Yi has dropped to the reserve board just because he's had a tough 2019. But what I'm especially excited about is the return of the former women's world chess champion, Ho Yi Fan, because we see that Ju Wen Jun is also on the team. And as the reigning women's world chess champion, she is the reserve. So that's really interesting to note because yep. Yi Fan isn't playing so much, she's not very active. I'm very curious to see her playing shape these days as it is hard to go from an extended period of inactivity to facing some of the best players in the world. I was, I'm really glad you brought that up. I was surprised about that too. I'm not sure that we will see uh, uh, Hoi Fawn always, always representing the board for. Remember the team captains, of course, can make changes throughout, but it is an interesting storyline. You have the reigning women's world champion as a reserve over the person who many people feel, if she was active, not attending a uh, university in Oxford, that would still be maybe the women's world champion. So uh, nice when you have a choice like that, if you are the team captain, uh, Yi Zhang Chuan, of course, but uh, let's move on to the, the next team, because speaking of team captains, I know it's rare when you have a lineup and the biggest star uh, in your field is, is not going to be playing. But I think when you're when you're championed by the 13th world champion, Gary Kasparov, uh, the team captain for Team Europe this year. And then you've got obviously just a crazy, crazy cast. there. going to be really hard to pick against Team Europe in this event. That team is absolutely stacked, Danny. And what's interesting to note about a team like this is unlike, say, a national team where they built chemistry over time, it's not so clear if these players are great, the best of friends. I know in particular, MBL, Levon Aronian, and each year they spend a lot of time together in the Grand Chess Tour, but you may not have the team chemistry you'll see with a team like Team India. Yeah, it's, it's a fair point, right? Team Europe is not a team that normally represents, uh, represents itself uh, in the Olympics or other team events. So, uh, although, as you said, these guys know each other by as, as peers competing in the Grand Chess Tour, among other top events. Um, of course, a lot of them compete in other over-the-board chess leagues, things like the Bundesliga, and have often played on the same teams as well. So I think one of the most interesting storylines we have is that sitting out, at least to start things, is Anish Giri, right? I think a lot of people might have expected him to be the active board three over JKD, young Christoph Duda, but that was not the uh, the captain Gary Kasparov's decisions. We don't have all the reasons for that. Maybe, maybe that was because Anish just finished playing in the Magnus Invitational. Who knows why, right? But I think that that's an interesting thing that catches your eye for sure. And uh, I, but speaking I of miss Danny, go ahead. sorry to, to cut you off there, not to mention that they have Anna Muzichuk and Nana Zagnidze um, uh, as the, the fem top female player and the reserve for this team. I mean, that is a superstar cast in the yep. world of women's chess, and I'm super excited to see them play because Nana's been playing extremely well as of late. Anna Muzichuk, her rating is well over 2,500 and above 2,550, and uh, she's been a former women's world champion herself. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned that because as we move on to Team India, you and I were talking about uh, – all the different lineups before we went live here doing our, our preparation. And I think you and I looked at uh, the, the board four and top women's player representing Team India, Humpi Canero, uh, obviously a former women's world champion, no longer the reigning, but maybe playing some of the best chess of any uh, female chess player on the planet right now. So if you're looking for a swing in some of these close matches, we always look at the top boards, Vishy Anand, Vita Gujarathi, of course. But Humpi Canero might actually be uh, the the favorite is it fair to say that among among all the board four and top women players? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, this is actually a very tricky Indian lineup because I think they're a bit underrated in terms of rapid chess from the men, and then they have these super strong women uh, to join them. An all grandmaster lineup. You have Humpi Kunera and Harika Dronavali, extremely strong players in their own right. And with uh, Humpi playing the way she has been as of late, I would watch out if I were every other team because you look at Vidya Gujarati, who's been doing a lot of commentary and has been getting ready, very serious training for this event and led by the one and only Vishwanathan Anand, the former world champion, and rounded out by Hari Krishnan Adiban. That is a tough, tough lineup. Absolutely. And, and we know that uh, Vishy Anand has been doing a lot on chess.com as of late, not playing in events quite like this. He was with us almost every day for commentary during the candidates, but I'm sure he's as anxious as anybody to play in an elite serious event. So uh, moving on here, let's, let's talk about uh, one of the biggest storylines of the event, a guy that was left out of the candidates, withdrew himself or, or, or left out, depending on how you want to look at that. that. But either way, Tamer Rajabov is champion, championing, leading the Team FIDE, basically, Team Rest of World, of course, the FIDE president is the captain there. Um, Ali Reza Farouja may be the biggest star on this team as far as the online chess community goes. But Tamar Rajabov is still number nine in the world, a top 10 player. And uh, that, 
This is a scary lineup, right? Speaking of a, of a lineup that is going to maybe need to find a little bit of chemistry, like Team Europe, but I wouldn't want to be facing off against these guys either. I certainly wouldn't, and it will be interesting team meetings between Rajabov and Arkady Dvorakovic, <laughs> but right. uh, as you said, Ali Reza Faruja, the superstar, he's going to be the big name in chess outside of the absolute top players in the world. He did beat Magnus Carlsen in a banter blitz match, so that was uh, well publicized, and I lo look at board three, Basem Amin, and as well as the, their, their top women players here, Maria Muzichuk will be playing her sister, Anna Muzichuk, right. and while in a classical game, they may make a draw, when you're on different teams, you can't just say, hey, let's split the point. You have to do what's best for your team. So I am very interested to see what happens in a Muzichuk Muzichuk battle. Can't wait. It's Muzichuk versus Muzichuk. Of course, they played each other many times, but like you said, there is no peace here, uh, despite being sisters when it comes to uh, what your team might need. Your captain might really demand that you need to get a victory, and it'll be interesting to see what happens when they face off. Uh, now, moving on. We've got our, our sixth and uh, final team here to preview, Team Russia. Oh, no, it's not our sixth and final team. Of course, I forgot my own home country uh, a little early here on the West Coast, so I, we'll, we'll save that. But before we get to Team USA, uh, Jan Nepomnishi is leading the way for Team Russia, as he does. But to me, one of the biggest storylines, I look at that guy, Sergei Karyakin, uh, as a board three, and I just I can't help but do a double take. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty odd to see, right? You look at this lineup and there's a Karyakin. Wait, he's not playing for the World Championship? Oh, that was 2016, and they have so many other stars. But Jan Nepomnishi, who is uh, in joint first but second uh, by tiebreaks because of his head-to-head -head loss to Maxime Bashir Grab in the Candidates Tournament, he is, of course, in absolute force, and especially in rapid play because he puts so much pressure on his opponents in uh, – on the clock that I think that it'll be tough for anybody against him in no matter the format. And we have our Temiev, we have Andrekin, and I think the big superstar of this team will be Alexander Goryachkina, who lost the world chess championship match to Ju and June yep. just a few months back, but she is so strong these days, nearly 2,600 feet a rated. I think that that is going to be their superstar. Yeah, and again, we keep coming back to the, the board four matchup there, the top woman player for each team, perhaps bring, being the swing there. I think it's uh, going to be definitely some fighting chess on every board, but we know that uh, Goroshkina and Zhu and Jun had an, an exciting, uh, an amazing match uh, just last year. So should be should be really interesting to see how she fares against the other top women players. Speaking of top women players, Grandmaster Irina Crush, very well known to uh, the United States chess fans tuning in. And let's so let's preview Team USA here and uh, start there in the opposite direction, right? We know we have Hikaru Nakamura listed as board one, um, of course. What, one of the biggest stars on the planet. But how do you think Irina does in this field of some of the some of the world's elite women players? Yeah, that's, I guess, where your cause for concern will be, is that Irina Crush is a very strong player, of course, but you look at the other players that she will be facing with a Goryachkina, a Hui Fan, a Muzichuk sister do it. That is going to be a very tough spot for right. Team USA. Of course, they have uh, their <laughs> superstar, super GM lineup across the board with Nakamura, Caruana, Dominguez, and Wesley So, but it's going to be a tough go of things for both Crush and Zatonsky. Yeah, and it's it's crazy uh, to think about that. Obviously, Arena Crush is a super strong player, but not quite among the world's elite in terms of the top women players on the planet anymore. And so I, I agree, that board four matchup could be something Team USA you know, really has to keep a close eye on. But also, interesting decision by John Donaldson, the captain. We know that Fabiana Caruana is higher rated than, than Hikaru Nakamura in terms of the over-the-board classical ratings, but I don't think anyone would question his decision to put Hikaru as the board one facing off against the other board ones. We know he just made it all the way to the final in the Magnus Invitational. And of course, Hikaru is, you know, hardly needs an introduction. And, and that makes me actually think I'd be pretty scared to face Fabiano on board two, right? So really, I think that it makes Team USA kind of scary, right? To see Hikaru on board one and then Fabiano as a board two, which is not something he's listed as every day, right? And I think a big question is which Fabiano Caruana will show up. Is it the Fabiano right. Caruana who struggles in the Grand Chess Tour events? Will it be the Fabiano Caruana who looked excellent in the Magnus Invitational or the Fabiano Caruana who is the MVP of the Pro Chess League? And so right. with the online format seeming to favor Fabiano compared to some of his results and over the board rapid chess, I think Fabiano Caruana on board two is an excellent choice. And you you know, you have to look at Wesley Stone Reserve, and that is just a head scratch. Yeah, that's how that's strong scary. he is. 
Yes. Well, it's it's scary and a head scratcher, right? He could fill in for any of those boards, you know, at, at a different time. Speaking of a former pro chess league MVP, he's helped lead the St. Louis Archbishops to multiple titles throughout different years. So, uh, yeah, you're right. It's it's uh, it's really interesting to see that lineup, and and it'll be exciting to see how they fare against the rest of the teams in the world. We have our team captains for each particular nation uh, in the FeedHS.com Online Nations Cup. Just to remind you, you've seen them as we've broken down each card, but there they are. Yi Zhengtuan representing China, Gary Kasparov representing Team Europe, Vishwanathan Anand, the only co-player, co-captain, uh, both, both captaining and playing himself. John Donaldson, as we've said, has, is pretty much the default captain for Team USA in any, in any team event. Alexander Montilev for Team Russia, and then Arkady Dibrakovich, of course, representing those flying the FIDE, the FIDE flag in this event, the team rest of the world. Now, before, before we uh, get set here, I'm being told, Robert, that we are moments away from the drawing of lots happening. Uh, the technical meetings are wrapping up there. We saw all the players and captains earlier in a Zoom call. If you're just joining us, they are here. Uh, but... Before we do that, we'll remind everybody of how fair play works. Uh, last week, I obviously hosted a, a State of Chess.com address. We do it every quarter, but the big topic was fair play. And, of course, a lot, a lot was addressed about uh, as much as we can about what we're doing sort of under the hood, if you will, the, the, the DNA analysis that, that is always going in to trying to detect irregularities and improbabilities of human play. But we also want to really address everything that's being done during this event, Robert. Each team is assigned both a FIDE arbiter to observe them closely uh, in, in the Zoom call. They are focused on one team, Robert, so don't even pick your nose because the FIDE arbiter will see it. Uh, and, of course, a chess.com trained sort of proctor, right? We, we have a, a, huge, a huge team that's working uh, right now around the clock with so many events coming online. We had the Sunway Sickest, right, the first ever classical event held online. Um, and, and so many other events. So our, we have both a chess.com specialist proctor and a FIDE arbiter. Uh, we, we will be doing regular security checks, as you can see right there, talking about scanning the room with webcam, making sure there's no phone, no other players in there. Uh, of course, the, uh, the players are also going to be required to share their screen. Now, now that's an interesting one, Robert, because you and I know we work, we work on the fair play team stuff. Sharing screens can sometimes lead to extra bandwidth of your internet connection, right? And that can be a little bit tough locally. So, but it also really makes you desire to focus fully on the chess and don't be worrying about what anybody's saying about you or even really observing anything else because your screen is being seen the whole time. There is no checking Facebook during this event. Your thoughts on yeah. that? You know, I think that uh, in this day and age, it's a necessity to make sure that everybody is uh, abiding by the regulations and the laws that are put in place. And I think these all of these players are extremely trustworthy. It's not that anybody has any doubts about them, uh, but it is good just for everyone's nerves to be soothed. Just make sure that nobody has to stress about anything besides the chess, that this is a good protocol in place. The players have agreed to it. And I think we will see exciting chess without having to have any of the concerns of, yep. you know, is everybody playing fairly? When you see an excellent combination, it's from the player's brain. And on that note, too, again, the, as you see the last few points, if, if people are worried we missed something, every call is recorded and is available to, to be reviewed at the call and request of any team or an arbiter, of course. Uh, the players, one thing that's different than normal team events, Robert, the players and captains will not actually be allowed to communicate with each other during a round, which is for those who follow the Olympiad and other team events closely, there is sometimes a loud communication, right? A captain can can express to a player that he'd wish for him to take a draw for the team and do what's best for the overall score. That's not allowed, again, to, to make it even more secure that the captains wouldn't be getting information and re be relaying or tipping anything that they might know in an online format. Uh, and as, as, of course, already mentioned at the top of this breakdown, chess.com's algorithm and fair play review, kind of the DNA analysis we've already done on all the best chess players in the world because we're doing it all the time, is there. We know, we know what we're looking for, and we're working hard and doing it. And so, as you said, we're not worried about it, but I think it's fair when you have the first ever event of this kind, Robert, where FIDE is not only sanctioning, putting its stamp on an online event that in its entirety will be completed online, right? Unlike the official Random World Chess Championship we had last year, where the finals, at least, would be, would be physical and over the board in Oslo, Norway. This is an event that is elite, but, we, but will be completely played online. And I think it, it really pushed all of us, the Chess.com team and FIDE, to come together and figure out what we'd be comfortable with for this much prize money and this much at stake. So uh, we're, we're pretty excited. We're going to be coming back here, Robert. The drawing of lots is, is, uh, is about to begin. We are told that the first team will be drawn in just a few minutes. So, Robert, I know what you normally do during these breaks. Don't go anywhere. 
We're going to be back in just a couple minutes. And we are back here. I'm told we are ready. We have our first drawing that has been done. So without any further ado, Robert, it's time for the drawing of lots to continue and reveal who plays who, not just in round one, but we will have the full schedule after today's drawing of lots. So don't go anywhere, everybody. That's what you're, that's what you're waiting around to see, along with other interviews that will come your way, maybe from the players and captains. So Robert, you ready? I'm definitely ready. Way more excited for the drawing of lots than a lot of draws. Okay. There you go. Great play of words. Team one, uh, first drawn here will be, drum roll please, Team Europe. Okay, so Team Europe draws the one seed. Now, what does this mean, Robert? This means they will get uh, white on board one against whoever they play in the first round. So obviously things, things rotate from there, but uh, Team Europe, the, uh, the one seed overall, we still don't know who they're going to play. Your thoughts on how uh, Captain Gary Kasparov will react to that news? You have to be happy to have Maxi Vashilagrov, an extremely well-prepared player with the white pieces, and Ani Muzichuk, if Gary decides to go with the top four, she will be sturdy with the black pieces, a very solid competitor in her own right. So I do like the fact that you get Maxime in particular, the white pieces in the first round. 
Well, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to board three and say not only do I agree with you, but young Christoph Duda, again, assuming that this is the lineup we look at, of course, team captains, I mentioned earlier we would explain those rules. Team captains have the right to change lineups and sub in players a half an hour before the start of any particular round. That is the deadline. So uh, we will obviously give you that information if and when it changes at the last second for any team. Who knows, a player is sick, team captain changes their mind. But those are the rules. They have until a half an hour before the first move is made. Uh, and uh, But as you said, Maxime bachet le Grave, Jan Christophe Duda, they get the white pieces. How does that help Team Europe? We're going to find out. But it may depend on who they're playing against because uh, team number two is about to be drawn right now. Here we go. Hardly any time for a drum roll, and Team Russia is revealed as their opponent. Wow. Talk about a great way to start things off. Of course, this is a completely random uh, algorithm that is pulling these numbers, Robert, but that means, you know what that means. We're going to get Maxime Bache de Grave versus Jan Nepomniachtchi on boards on uh, board one as far as a, a matchup that matters. You're talking about the two guys that are leading the FIDE candidates tournament at the break. Right. If, if I uh, needed a reason to get a little more amped up than the seven cups of coffee I have before 6 a.m., that might be it. <laughs> That's going to be super exciting. As you said, they're leading the candidates tournament together, but though Maxime has the head to head victory. And well, my advice to Jan de Pomsch is maybe don't play the French defense against the Frenchman with three names. Well, and, you know, it also means that that board three matchup, Jan Christophe Duda, now he does have white, but he has to go up against the minister of defense himself, Sergei Karyakin. Wow, what an interesting storyline the board three is going to be. Of course, we will preview every board, and, and uh, Levon Aronian playing on board two versus Vladislav Artemyev. Uh, of course, Levon Aronian needs no introduction. Uh, no surprise, he's, he's helping out Team Europe in this event. But going up against Vladislav Artemyev, playing some of the best chess in the world of his career right now, but also online, he just won the Abu Dhabi Super Blitz tournament here that we had a, a couple weeks ago. So... Crazy, exciting stuff. Now I'm really starting to get those tingles now that we know who's playing who and, and, and when. So uh, board, board uh, sorry, not board, uh, team number three is about to be revealed here. So we're going to continue to row here. The people are loving it. Team China. Okay, Robert, go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ding Li Ren is looking for revenge because he had Magnus Carlsen just in the palm of his hand. He let Magnus Carlsen escape in the Magnus Invitational. So you know that Ding Li Ren is motivated. He's playing excellent uh, rapid chess these days. So Ding Li Ren with the white pieces, super sharp player, super well prepared, and incredibly difficult to fend off. So I like giving Ding Li Ren the white pieces. And I'm especially curious, once again, for Hui Fan on board four with the black pieces. That is a tough, I don't know who she's playing yet, but having black against a strong player in your first game back in a serious tournament in a while, not going to be easy for her. Yeah, Hui Fan is uh, certainly uh, going to have her work cut out for her. I think, as you said, she's coming back from a break anyway. I, I would argue every, every matchup will be something to kind of Really, really remind her she needs to shake off the rust quickly. But getting black in the first round, maybe that's not her favorite color to get. Uh, but as you said, Ding Li Ren gets white. Can't complain about that. Wei Yi also fielding the first move. So who are they fielding these moves against? Let's find out. Team number four being revealed right now. Rest of wow. world. So Team Ro, again, for those of you just tuning in, Ro in this case stands for Team Rest of the World. Of course, these are players, some of the Biggest names in the game. They hardly need an introduction, but uh, Tamo Rajabov flying under the FIDE flag. And you can read into that whatever you will. It, it, maybe it just makes sense, given that he is one of the top 10 players on the planet and needed, needed to be in this event. But also competing for FIDE as board one, uh, given, given the potential controversy there between him and uh, his, uh, him being left out of the FIDE candidate. So super interesting to see him face off against Ding Li Ren, of course, a player he would have been playing against Robert if he had been at the candidates. But then you have Ali Reza Faruja there, lurking in the background, the young, uh, tall 16-year-old, going to be taken on Wang Hao. Uh, your thoughts on, on uh, that particular matchup? And we know the top two boards for the rest of the world really well between Raj Bhav and Faruja. And I think Basem Amin does not get the attention he deserves. He is the strongest player in African history. He's been over 2,700. He's just so talented. And sometimes his openings cause him some trouble. But if he gets the position that he feels comfortable in, he can take out anybody in this field. So watch out on board three. Wei Yi needs to be very careful against a player of Basem Amin's caliber. Absolutely. And so... Uh, I can't I can't wait to see that team China taking on team rest of the world. I think that's one that we 
again, we're going to have to see how the team chemistry plays out. Like you said, similar to Team Europe, these aren't guys that play every day on the same team. Uh, how that affects things, we'll find out. Of course, chess is a very individual game, but we know from the Pro Chess League and uh, covering events like the Chess Olympiad, the chemistry can matter in some of the critical moments in terms of how you feel, how much you trust your teammates, right? When you've seen a guy hold a position many, many years in team events, it's different than, than seeing them play a tough position for the first time, and how does that affect you? So we'll be talking about all these things throughout the week, but right now we got to talk about team number five. I'm being told, again, now that the algorithm is rolling, the algorithm doesn't stop. Team India, <laughs> ready to roll here. And, well, Danny, I know you're going to say it, so I'll just uh, do you a favor as your co-commentator here and say, this for nothing, on with the white pieces, always a good thing. Yeah, it's never a bad thing when Anon has the white piece or the black pieces. The guy is uh, very well prepared, but certainly representing the white pieces there on board one means he's going to be playing the first move against none other than Hikaru Nakamura. You see the sixth seed fills itself out automatically. Interesting that that worked out. The, the United States was the sixth and final team we previewed today, and they ended up getting the sixth seed, uh, though randomly through, through the drawing of Lot. So, uh, Vichy Anon versus Hikaru Nakamura. Vidit Gujarathi against Fabiano Caruana. Th that's, that's one I cannot wait to see. Of course, Lanier Dominguez-Perez taking on Pantelahari Krishna. And those lineups can change. You have Wesley So just waiting in the wing, hoping to jump in at some point for Team USA. Uh, and then Hooping Canero, who I think has to, be, has to be considered a big favorite against Irina Crush. It's really going to be an exciting opportunity to see if Irina can find some of that old form and really compete a bit among the world's elite women players in this event. Uh, so that, that's a huge storyline right there if the United States is going to fare well in this online Nations Cup. So, all right. Well, on that note, Robert, we're, we're going we're gonna to take a very, very quick break because now we have even more sort of meat on the bone here to discuss. Uh, we know who will play who in the first round. Uh, we know which teams are seated in what order, and that's also going to tell us the pairings for the rest of the event. So much more to talk about here in the FeedHS.com online Nations Tub. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
And we are back now after the drawing of lots for the first ever FeedHS.com Online Nations Cup. With us now, a man who doesn't really need to be introduced, but we have to do it every time. He is the FIDE president, and this time he's also the captain of Team World, uh, Arkady Dibrokovic. Arkady, your initial thoughts on, on uh, what the drawing of lots revealed as far as who your team will play in the first round. Well, hello, guys. Thank you for a uh, nice ceremony. Chess.com is um, really instrumental in uh, doing this at a high-quality level. Uh, it was good to see all the captains. Uh, the team, uh, the rest of the world, the world team will play against uh, China and India during the first uh, day. Uh, tough teams to compete, but every team is tough to compete. So it's not, uh, well, it doesn't matter really who to start with, uh, but uh, in Team China, there are some really great players, including uh, some of the uh, top 10 players uh, in the men's section and uh, uh, two world champions in the women's section. So uh, it's, a, uh, it's a tough tough one. And of course, Vishay Anand, uh, Team India, uh, is a great personality and uh, one of the best players still. So uh, it's, uh, it's going to be very nice to compete with him as well. Well, Arkady, did the captain's meeting make you nervous because you are you were there pitted against two former world champions? So did they challenge you to a captain's board as well? <laughs> well, I know them personally for a long time, so uh, no nerves involved. Uh, and it was uh, uh, very good to follow the conversation between Gary and Vishy uh, on uh, the implications of uh, uh, pandemic limitations uh, and how people uh, keep safe. Uh, uh, so um, um, we are in a good mood, uh, all of us. Arkady, obviously, uh, speaking to you is, uh, is is a unique opportunity here, given that this is the first event of its kind, right? And and obviously, the circumstances that sort of led both Chess.com and FIDE for us to kind of rush this forward are unique, uh, given given what what's been going on with COVID nineteen. But but how special, regardless of the circumstances that maybe pushed it to happening now, how special is it for FIDE to be? Uh, backing an event of this of this level, this this sort of elite nature, a team event online, is this something FIDE has always wanted to do, and and the timing just worked out to make it happen now? Uh, yeah, I would say that uh, we have been thinking uh, about online uh, activities for a long period of time. Now it is just uh, inevitable. There is no choice but to uh, organize and be involved into online competitions and other. Activities, so we uh, had uh, different kinds of thought, but uh, I personally thought that the team competition would serve uh, uh, very well as a uh, first experience, uh, since we should distinguish itself uh, uh, from uh, other things, um, uh, and team competitions is the best format we can do. But we will do some individual competitions as well uh, in the future, uh, and uh, I am happy that uh, with the help of Chess.com and other partners, including Ugra government, we able to invite all top players to compete and uh, most of them agreed to compete so uh, we're really happy that uh, we can do something special under feed umbrella with very strong partners that's great uh the uh last thing to leave you with is something that a lot of people obviously talking about tamor verjabov is board one for team fide are there any uh and anything you can share as far as lingering feelings or issues between the fide uh leadership and tamor verjabov as far as his position on the candidates or is it is it water under the bridge at this point with tamor playing for the team or anything you can say to us on that uh, we've been uh, in very close communications with Timur over the last few weeks, uh, and uh, I'm happy that he agreed to play for our team. Um, uh, and the captain, I trust him, uh, and I trust uh, uh, in his talent uh, and uh, ability to compete with uh, the strongest uh, uh, teams. Uh, uh, so he uh, is going to be a great part of uh, our squad. Uh, and of course, we discussed also the implications of the um, uh, candidates. Uh, uh, tournament and uh, how we would uh, um, restore uh, Timur's uh, participation in the World Championship uh, cycle. So I personally believe that, that uh, it would be fair and reasonable to uh, give him a wild card for the next candidate tournament, not this one, but uh, uh, the next one in 2022. Uh, uh, but that would re uh, still require an approval from the FIDE Council, so we'll discuss uh, this matter uh, pretty soon. 
Interesting stuff. Appreciate that. That was uh, a lot, a lot of information, even more than I thought we'd get out of it. So it's nice to nice to hear that both sides are, are working toward the solution they are. But Arkady, we keep you all day and, and continue to ask you some some of these big picture questions. But we appreciate Fide's support. Obviously, we're speaking for Chess.com. Super, super happy and, and feel very fortunate and humbled to be a part of this event. So thank you and and to all those at Fide. And and I'm going to let you go now because I'm told we have a lot of other captains yeah. who may be joining us here as thank well. Thank you. So, thank you. Looking forward for a great event. Uh, I see you soon. Thank, Thank you, Arcadi. All right, everybody. And we are back here now with another captain and board one player, the only the only co-captain and player of the event, Vishwanathan Anand Vishi. It looks like you switched sides of the table over there from where you were joining us from FIDE candidates coverage. Yeah, very much. I was uh, over there and over here, and it's a very cloudy day. Whereas back in March, it was uh, surprisingly sunny. So uh, it should look different. Well, uh, either way, uh, obviously this is this is uh, super exciting to have you with us now as a player, uh, different than uh, what what was there for about ten days joining us for the FIDE candidates coverage. But how excited are you to compete online here? We know it's an online event, uh, but you're not someone who has who has played in too many online chess events. Obviously, you've competed in the Pro Chess League, but other than that, playing an elite online event is is not something you've you've done a whole lot in your career. Is that right? Uh, no, I haven't uh, done too uh, too much of it. And um, I'm kind of curious how it goes. I mean, it's the only kind of event that can happen now. Um, and I guess it will um, occupy a bigger share of the pie in the future. I don't think it will be 100%, but I think uh, it will be a bigger part of the mix. And uh, well, I'm curious to see how it is again. I've forgotten simply the, 
uh, by, uh, my previous experience playing online. So it's uh, nice to get a uh, chance. Well, Vishy, as not just a player, but also as the captain of Team India, what was it like behind the scenes and how much you know importance are you placing on this event, not just for yourself, but also for your country? Um, well, we obviously all take it seriously. Um, so, you know, the team has had a couple of chats and uh, things like that. But um, I mean, to be honest, you only start thinking very uh, concretely about an event when you get the pairings and things like that. So I think it's only today that you uh, start thinking about it. I'm sure that everyone's been uh, working a little bit and brushing up. I'm going to ask you a question that is uh, maybe a little bit unfair, but you are in a, in a unique position as both the captain and the, the player here. But looking at your team as a captain and knowing your pairings for the first round, you obviously get the white pieces against Hikaru Nakamura, but then you have Vidic Gujarati playing black against Fabiano Caruana. You jump ahead to board four, you have Humvi Canero playing black against Arena Crush. So as a, as a captain, do you look at any of these particular matchups, Pantala Hari Krishna versus Lanier Dominguez Perez, with any particular interest or, or even admitting some nerves? Or will there be a pep talk for anybody heading into this matchup versus Team USA? Um, it depends. I mean, everyone uh, will have opponents they like or dislike, but... Uh, our structures, I mean, the format simply doesn't allow for that much maneuverability. I mean, if we could uh, move everyone to any board, I think uh, that would be more interesting. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you would get surprising pairings and so on. But here, uh, well, there's just one person who can uh, skip. And uh, uh, Anyway, I'll have my first meeting with them with these pairings, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, maybe in future, we should be able to move the pairings even more. I have right, uh, well, one question for you, Vishy, that I just need to know the answer to. Since you are the board one and the captain, who says, hey, Vishy, you have to sit out next game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope when I need it, I will uh, take it. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of, uh, but I'm hoping that I don't have too much to do as a captain because uh, I kind of accepted the captain's post only because I thought there wasn't much work. And uh, I would hate for the captain's job to actually take any of my time because I, <laughs> I, I want to be here principally as a player. Um, I thought the board orders are fixed and we just have to change one name a day and it's not a big deal. So I decided, right. I thought it was a symbolic post, to be honest. Well, I mean, if there's a conversa a tough conversation that has to happen with your board one, you know, hey, Vishy, you got to sit this one out. And then Vishy comes back at you and says, no, I'm not sitting out, <laughs> right? I mean, that's going to be a tough argument to win there. Between the oh, captain. but I'm going to crack, crack the whip on him. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to. <laughs> All right, Vishy. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We know that it's been uh, kind of a long opening ceremony, drawing the lots. We appreciate you sticking around for an interview. Everyone, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we will have yet another team captain. Vishy, best of luck to you and Team India here coming up versus Team USA. And don't go anywhere, everybody. We'll be right back.
and the action continues to roll on here for the first ever FeedHS.com Online Nations Cup. And remind everybody, while we have your attention, that the official hashtag for the event is right there, hashtag Nations Cup. Get involved on social media. Let us know not just your thoughts on our daily question here, which of course has to be, which round one matchup are you most excited to see? Today's show has been all about who will play who. We did the official and random drawing of lots a few moments ago if you're just tuning in. Uh, but uh, let us know on social media. Use the hashtag, and we can't wait to potentially read some of your answers on air today before we go off offline. But speaking of being on air, uh, we have a guy here we need to get to. Maxime Bache legrave not a team captain, but a, a board one. And you maybe have one of the most interesting matchups of all, man. In the first round, you're facing off against Jan Napomnishi, your co-leader of the FIDE candidates at the halfway point. Are you going to save, are you going to hold anything back in terms of preparation because of the looming candidates, or are you going to pull out all the punches here against Jan? Yeah, good morning. And uh, basically, I played Jan with white. Yeah. So tomorrow, I mean, it's not clear to show if we play together, of course, because, uh, I mean, one of the teams can, can get a sub. But in general, um, if I play him with white, it doesn't, I mean, it's not a matchup that's featured in the candidate, so I can, I can play my prep if I want to. Right. Yeah. And well, Maxime, let me ask you a question that I was kind of posing earlier. Your team is from Team Europe, so there's no sort of national you know, interest on the line here. Does that make your chances better in the sense that there's no nervousness of representing your country? Or do you think that because the uh, six of you don't play together as a team so often, perhaps there is a team chemistry dynamic that uh, isn't there that there may be for other teams? I like I like our team. I fancy our chances. Basically, we're, we're all edit players. I mean, all four of the men and uh, both women also. So I think uh, we have very decent chances. And, uh, um, you know, I'm excited by the mix, of course, of experience and, uh, and young Christoph's youth and, you know, boldness, so, which might come in handy at some point. What, any thoughts on, on uh, you know, if you were the team captain, could you answer on why Anish is listed as a reserve? Do you have any messages for Anish, what he needs to do to get in the main lineup? Well, I have full confidence in, in our captain. Okay. Uh, because, well, we are <laughs> kind of, I mean, arguably the best player ever as team captain, so he knows what he's talking about in general. And well, Maxime, I have a question about you because you recently just played in the uh, Max Cross Invitational. How are you feeling about your form after what was probably in, you know, a, a disappointing performance? Um, yeah, things didn't go my way, clearly, in that event. And um, yeah, there were a few turn turnaround moments, but of course, new event, new state of mind. So I, I'm hoping that, you know, I got a few days of rest and um, that I'll use that experience maybe to to be more used to um, playing online with, um, you know, almost what feels like a classical time control. I mean, in comparison to, to the time controls we're used to play when playing online, which is basically one plus zero or three plus zero. You made a good point earlier, and just to clarify for all the viewers, that you, you've already played Jan uh, Nepomnishi as white at the FIDE candidates. In fact, it was something that delivered a, a maybe the biggest win of the event so far for you. And so that means no holding back tomorrow. Do you expect if you play E4 that Jan will go away from the French tomorrow? On this, I have no idea, but I feel like Jan has been uh, playing his leftovers Less leftover preparations from the candidates, and um, so I do expect the French as a realistic option, but uh, but we'll see. Okay. Well, Maxime, it's been great having you. Uh, good to catch up, and of course, we wish you the best of luck as Board One leading Team Europe to what maybe will be the uh, the victory of a, of the first ever Online Nations Cup. But either way, thanks for tuning in. Don't go anywhere, everybody. We still have a couple more interviews just ahead. We'll be back in a couple minutes.
and we are back here yet again with another interview now joined by Grandmaster Maria Muzichuk, who playing board four for Team World means you have to go up against your sister and, and many, many opponents you've faced many times in some of the top women's events. Maria, how excited are you to represent Team World and, uh, and looking ahead to your first round opponent? Yeah, of course, I'm very glad to take part in this tournament, though I'm not <laughs> used to play online tournaments and actually I haven't played serious online games for quite a long time. But uh, on the other hand, if so many people manage to, to cope with the technical details, so hopefully <laughs> I will cope too. And of course, if so many spectators uh, all over the world want to follow our games, so I don't see any reason why to deprive them of this uh, possibility. Well, Maria, the question I think everybody wants the answer to is when you play your sister, and now it's not just an individual game where, you know, it doesn't impact anybody else. You're in a team event. How do you do that? How do you, you know, face your sister in a very serious competition? And, you know, just isn't it difficult for you? I like to say that for me, it's very difficult to play with my sister, <laughs> but probably it's possible to understand only if you have a sister or brother, because otherwise it's hard to, uh, to understand why it's so difficult. But uh, okay, I mean, as for this tournament, of course, I can like to play with my sister and so on. But uh, I'm just thinking that if we decide to play a serious game and uh, like suddenly we finish in the game in, in a draw, like objective results. So everybody will say, oh, no, they didn't play. Of course, it wasn't serious. And so, so. <laughs> but you now in the in the first round, it's not your sister, but obviously a super tough opponent, Team World facing off against Team China. Uh, China, yes. Uh, assuming, I mean. I know it's uh, it's uh, picking a, a poison, but who would you rather face? Hoi Fawn, uh, if, if it seems that the lineups will, will remain the way they were listed and submitted as of this point, or the reigning women's world champion, Zhu Wenjun. Do you have a, a preference for which one you might want to play here in, in round one? Mm, I don't know. I'm ready to play with both of them. I think they're very strong, and it's nice also for me because I can improve uh, my own playing, and uh, why not? <laughs> Right. Well, go ahead, go ahead, Danny. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I, I was wondering if, if uh, you know, obviously you're, you've competed against, against both these ladies uh, many times, but Yifan has been, uh, she hasn't been competing in, in, in top events here for a while, right? Does that, does that make you happy that if you're going to, if you're going to face her in, in round one, you might get the white pieces against her? Mm, but okay, I still think that uh, even if, if we don't play serious uh, tournaments, like normal tournaments, we can play online. So it's not like uh, we lose our quality of chess. Right. <laughs> so I think, of, of course, we can train uh, chess every day and it's pretty much the same as playing in, in, in tournaments. So I, I don't think that uh, some one of the players will be out of practice. Right. And Maria, did your team, since this is not a team of players who is used to playing together, did you have training sessions or just, you know, a group chat and get in touch with all the players before this event? Of course, of course, we have a group chat and uh, uh, I think it could be a very good idea for everyone to try to play online chess because I don't think it's the same as in normal chess. But I think that after the first round, uh, I will see uh, how it's difficult for me and uh, if I am used to play chess on the screen. Well, Maria, we're, we're greatly looking forward to not just the first round, but the, the entire event. We wish Team World the absolute best of luck. And uh, of course, for you representing Board 4, and uh, hopefully you have, have a great event. We, we wish you luck and we will, we will see you maybe later on in the event for another interview. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Maria. All right. Well, uh, we we will now break down what many of the the round one matchups are. Just to remind everybody, we've got uh, so many, so many great players, so many great teams getting set to face off. Team Europe will be facing off against Team Russia. If you're just tuning in, we have already had the drawing of lots, so this is one of the matchups that you will see. Um, we've uh, we've also got, mm. as we were just talking to, Team China versus Team World, Maria Muzichuk probably taking on Hoi Fawn with the white pieces. And Robert, she wouldn't say it, but I, I guess, you know, and on, on, the, on the one hand, you know, 
a lot of the players acknowledge that they don't take online chess at this point as serious as they might over the board. And so from that perspective, I don't know that there may not be an opportunity to take advantage of Hoi Fawn's rust. You're playing in a very serious 25 plus 10 time control. I, I look at that matchup, Musichuk versus Yifan in the first round, and very intriguing. Unless, for all we know, uh, Ifan has been playing online with a secret account, right? So, True. I mean, she probably is taking this very seriously in training. And the question that I just, I know I keep harping back on this, is like, if you're Maria and you're playing Anna, who does your family root for? Like, let's say one of the team needs a decisive result just to finish in the final two. Do you root for a victory? Do you just... I mean, how does that work? I don't know. And she said herself, it is very difficult and only people who have a sibling in the same profession as them in a competitive profession at that will understand what it's like. And it must be very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. And and you've uh, brought our attention back to it. So just remind everybody, Anna Muzichuk is representing Team Europe. There she is there. And, uh, and as you said, Maria Muzichuk, her sister. So that matchup, when it goes down, we'll have everybody talking. And I'm, I'm sure we're going to see fighting chess. Let's remind everybody real quick of the other matchups. India versus USA. Of course, we caught up with Vichy Anand earlier. Can't wait to see what happens there. Vichy versus Hikaru on board one is going to have a lot of attention, but also Vidit versus Fabiano on board two. Uh, and it, it's it's sad when you feel like you're overlooking things like Hari Krishna versus Lanier Dominguez Perez. We're not. It's just it's just crazy the star power here. And then of course we have Humpy Canero taking on Arena Crush. So, Robert, this has been a this has been a pretty exciting day. Nothing like kicking the. Uh, kicking the rust off ourselves, right? This is a super, super uh, elite event here. The first one we've, we've really covered, I guess, since the FIDE candidates was postponed due to COVID-19. So just uh, real quick, your final thoughts on what we now know are the pairings and what we can look forward to here as a first event of its kind, something that should have all the chess fans just sort of salivating here for the next week here on chess.com. Yeah, I think there are so many fascinating storylines, including uh, this matchup between Maxime Vasilogrov and Yana Pomnichi, a matchup between the two leaders of the candidates tournament. There, of course, is Vishwanathan Anand, Hikaru Nakamura. That storyline just needs no explanation whatsoever. Uh, there's the return of Ifan, and will she be up to the form that has seen her rise to the high 2600s and become the former women's world chess champion and the dominant force in women's chess? Or will one of the other female players be up to the task here trying to vibe not just for that title, but also for the uh, top board in this event. And there's just so many fun, different, interesting tidbits to look at the rest of the world team with Basema Amin, uh, yeah. Jorge Corey, you know, these players who are less heralded, but extremely talented. And I want to give Corey a shout out in particular because at the 2018 Olympiad, he was the highest performer of all players. So that is a superstar player for the rest of the world team and one that just flies under the radar. And if you're a super grandmaster facing him, do not take him for granted. No, you, again, you uh, you make a great point. Kind of what I was saying at the end of previewing Team India, we were not uh, talking about every player in as much detail as we would like to, but Jorge Corey probably didn't get uh, talked about nearly enough today, given, like you said, he was not only picked for a reason by Team World, right, because of his performance at the Olympiad. This guy is a super talent and a rising star. If you don't know his name now, you may certainly know it by the end of this event. So uh, we saw we saw some questions earlier um, about the uh, the schedule. Why don't we remind everybody of the full schedule so that you can mark your calendars, clear them if you happen to have any other previous commitments. It's not that big of a deal. This is more important than anything you're doing. Um, and, uh, and so we hope you're here with me and Robert Hess on Chess TV all week. Uh, of course, the first round kicks off tomorrow morning, May 5th, and then we will be here all the way until Championship Sunday on May 10th, a super final going down between the top two teams to determine a very large portion of the prize money. So we're very excited to get this event underway. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's event. Remember, use the hashtag Nations Cup all week on social media. Uh, the daily question can be found at the official channel. We want to know what matchup has you most excited here for round one. So go ahead and let us know that. But uh, for my partner here... Grandmaster Robert Hess, the whole team. We're super excited for this event. Can't wait for round one to kick off. Join us tomorrow morning if you're here on the West Coast and uh, mark your calendars wherever you are. We will see you for the first ever FeedHS.com Online Nations Cup tomorrow.